internet, nice to see you. What you just heard is a resolution using an augmented sixth chord. Augmented sixth chord seems to be very hard for people to understand, and I think it's because they never given the story on how augmented chords came to be. So, today we're gonna see the easy way into augmented sixth chord. It makes so much sense when you see it the way I'm gonna show it to you today. So just follow me, and in a moment you're gonna understand how augmented sixth chord works, why they work, and you're gonna be able to play them on your guitar. They are incredibly easy when you see it this way. Our story starts in the 18th century in the Baroque era, when those big wig Baroque musicians were making music in a completely different way than how we do it today, because chords were not invented yet. So they were actually thinking about intervals on top of bass lines and how to move voices in different ways. Now, in the rest of this video, I'm going to use modern terminology, otherwise it would be too confusing for people who are not familiar with Baroque music theory. So you guys will forgive me for not being perfectly historically correct, but I am going to use terms like major chord, minor chord, first inversion, etc. Okay? Now, one of the bass lines that those Baroque musicians wanted to harmonize was a descending bass line starting from the first note of the key and going down to the fifth note of the key. So, in A minor, that will be A, G, F, E. So the first note of the key in A minor, then the seventh, the sixth, and the fifth. On the first note, they will simply play an A minor chord. After all, it is the key of A minor. And on the fifth note, the E, they will simply play either an E or an E seventh. And that chord will have the major third, the G sharp, because these notes help you come back to the A note. But what about the other two chords? The one on G and the one on F? Well, the intuition of the Baroque musician was that if you were playing what we call today a root position chord over a note, you will make it solid and stable. But if you wanted that chord to give some sense of movement, they would play what today we call a first inversion chord. So on this G note, they would play what we would call today an E minor chord in first inversion, the notes being E, G and B, and the G at the bass. And that would give some sense of movement, because you can tell that the chord progression doesn't end here. It, wants, it still wants to move, so this first inversion chord will want to go somewhere. Now, of course, they wouldn't call this a first inversion chord. They would call it a chord of the sixth, because there would be an interval of a sixth between this G note and the E note. Now, you would guess why they don't call this a chord of the 6-3, because there's an interval of a 6, sure, but there's also an interval of a third between the G and the B note. Well, because in their mind, whenever there is a third or a fifth, it's just understood. And if you have a sixth, the sixth will cancel out the fifth. It's all very complex if you want to go into that, but trust me here, they would call this a chord of the sixth. So they will have a root position chord on the A, a chord of the sixth, which is just a first inversion chord on the G, another chord of the sixth on the F, so in this case a D minor with a bass of F, and then they will play the E and back to the A. Now what I just played sounded perfectly okay to your ear. Let me play it again. But this very same sound will make a Baroque musician recoil in horror and disgust because it will contain the dreaded parallel fifth, which you guys can't hear because you got used to it, because they don't really sound that bad, but at the time parallel fifth were completely out of fashion simply because in the era before the Baroque era everybody was using parallel fifth, so all those things sound hopelessly out, totally out of fashion. And so just hearing this sound 
will make your music sound stale and crusty and old. It's interesting how today playing Pharrell fifths either doesn't give you any effect or it just makes the music sound more modern because for all the classical, baroque, romantic era we avoided them specifically because for them it sounded old. But for us now they sound more fresh and totally okay. So again, here's the audible sound, <laughs> okay? perfectly acceptable to us, but not for them. So what will Bach do, or for that matter, any Baroque musician? Well, there is a little loophole, if you want, in the parallel fifth rule, and that is that they did find perfect fifth objectionable, but if the second fifth is not perfect, so it's a diminished fifth, then it will sound perfectly fine to their ears. So what will they do is that on this second chord, on this D minor with a bass of F, that they will simply call an F of the sixth chord, they will raise the D to a D sharp, and so now they will have the notes F, D sharp, and A. Which works perfectly because now this D sharp is really close to the E note in the next chord, and so it feels like resolving there. So now the whole thing sounds this way, the A minor, the E minor in first inversion, this new chord, the E major, and the A minor again. So you see, we had a chord of the sixth, F, D, A, and we raised the sixth, F, D sharp. A. This F to D was already a major sixth, and once we raise the D, it becomes an augmented sixth. Hence the name of the chord. It would be enharmonic to a minor seventh, and indeed you could think of this chord modernly as an F seventh, because you have the F at the bass, the A which is the third, and this D sharp which is enharmonic to an E flat, so that would be really close to an F7, and indeed today a jazz musician will tell you that this is a 7th and this F7 is just a triton substitution of B7, which is the 5th of E, which is a way more complex way of seeing the exact same thing, because we are just simply raising a note to avoid a parallel 5th. Now, so far I played all those chords in 3 notes, and the version of the augmented 6th I found is what in jargon is called the Italian augmented 6th. But I could play everything in four voices. In this case, my starting uh, progression would be A minor, again E minor with a bass of G. On the F, I will actually play a D minor 7th with a bass of F, and then the E major. Not a radical difference, and again, I still have the problem of the parallel fifth between the chord on G and the chord on F, so I'm raising my D to a D sharp, and this is what happens. This version is called the German augmented sixth. It's just the Italian augmented sixth with an extra note, which is the perfect fifth over the bass, so really not that much more complex, but yeah, we like to give a lot of names to those things, so. This is not the only possible version though, because I can do something even different than that. So again, as a starting chord progression, I could play this, A minor, again, E minor over G, and I could play this strange thing here. Again, this sounds okay to our ears, there's still a parallel fifth inside, but what is this mystery chord here? Well, the notes are F, B, D, a, and it's a B minor 7th flat 5 in second inversion with the F at the base. A B minor 7th flat 5 will have the notes B, D, F, and A, and here we just put the F at the base. And that chord is the second chord in the key of A minor, so essentially this whole progression is ending with a 2, 5, 1 in A minor, which is kind of a standard, it was a standard at the time, and it's kind of a standard even today. But again, we have the problem of the parallel fifth, so we raise the D to a D sharp and we obtain something even different. Mm -hmm. 
that is what we call a French augmented sixth. Again, just a simple variation of the whole thing. So you see, the augmented sixth chord came to be simply as a dirty trick to avoid the sound of parallel fifths. And then people started liking them and using them more and more, and even today we use them quite a lot. They're maybe not as common as they were in the Baroque era or in the classical era, but we still use them very commonly. And indeed, most of the time that we use them, we say that they are triton substitution of something else, because at the end of the day, they're exactly the same note. You can think of them as another chord where you raise the sixth, or you can think of them as being triton substitutions of other chords. Everything works perfectly at the end of the day. They are exactly the same thing. So here we go. This is where augmented sixth chord come from, and that's probably the easiest way to see them because you build them thinking in the way the people who started using them were thinking. Of course, this can still sound a little bit complex at the beginning, so if you want to build up your chord knowledge and really understand all harmony on the guitar in an easy way, starting from the basics and going up and really understanding every single detail, then I do recommend you guys have a look at my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery, it's not a book. It's a complete video course that takes you from the basics up. We do everything you need to know about harmony and chords on your guitar. All the theory is done straight on the fretboard. There is no theory for the sake of theory here. Everything is immediately practical and everything is developed through exercises so you know how to apply these immediately on your guitar. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestions, write them down in the comment. I enjoy reading from you and I make videos on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zilio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!